Hello and welcome. Here is a story about heroes and heroines. You judge whether they were brave adventurers or merely very foolish. Enter Professor James Price, a barnstorming hot air balloonist and his accomplice, Miss Millie Viola. Various female balloonists who accompanied Professor James Price used that name. The pair's first billing was at the Minnesota State Fair in 1888. Millie made several appearances around Salt Lake City in 1889. James Price resurfaced in Australia the following year after having been forced to leave town in a hurry. In February 1890, James Price appeared in a new adventure assisting Professor Park Van Tassel and the Van Tassel sisters, Gladys and Valerie. The sisters were trapeze artists and had been appearing at the Haymarket Music Hall in George Street, Sydney, under the stage name, the Freitas Sisters. Valerie became the first woman in Australia to make a balloon ascent. In March, Gladys created a sensation in Melbourne when an estimated crowd of 10,000 people turned out to watch her parachute jump. The Van Tassels spent six months touring Australia before departing. In July, Professor Price made his way west, barnstorming in places like Gawler, now accompanied by Millie Viola. Arriving in Perth in 1891, they set about publicising an upcoming flight in March to take place at the Albion Hotel in Cottesloe. Sadly, fire damaged the balloon and the attempt was cancelled. Angry spectators demanded refunds. A few weeks later, a short but successful flight from Irwin Street in Perth became the first known flight in WA. Price and Viola then repeated this flight in Fremantle and in several WA country towns, including 2J, Northern and York, to earn money. After this, Professor Price left WA. Millie remained in Perth. Newspapers reported that her ballooning attire was a very becoming light silk heliotrope dress, profusely trimmed with white lace. No mention of her ballooning skills. In the 1890s, both balloons and parachutes were very rudimentary compared to today's standards and unsafe. A year later, Millie embarked on a tour of Southland New Zealand with another balloonist, Leon Sageholm, as her manager. Of her eight attempts at inflation, the balloon was incinerated twice and only once did Millie become successfully airborne. After a two-year hiatus, Millie Viola teamed up with her sister Essie for a tour of Queensland in 1895. Her younger sister stole the limelight after her balloon caught fire mid-flight during an ascent at Gympie. Essie survived this near disaster without sustaining the slightest injury. Millie and Essie then left Australia for San Francisco. Millie proposed an alarming new stunt. When the ice had melted in spring, she would be sealed in a barrel and dropped from a balloon into the river above Niagara Falls. She said, I have been just crazy to go over the falls ever since I heard about four years ago that Carlisle Graham had done it. He was knocked senseless, you know, and otherwise injured, and I almost hoped he would die so that I might be the first to do it successfully. But I'll be the first woman to do it anyway, and I'm going to bet every cent I've got that I don't get hurt a bit. You don't think betting is wrong, do you? Yes, four years is a long time to wait for a chance, but until now, something always prevented it. We had engagements ahead for balloon ascensions, and then too, I wanted to see everything since I have had enough of the colonies and want to stay in America for the rest of my life. She went on to say, yes, indeed, the colonies are peculiar. Take New Zealand, for instance. There, the women all wear bloomers and your hotel closes at 10 o'clock. 
and if you are out after that hour, you must stay out all night. Their laws are such too, that if one does anything that attracts a crowd, one is arrested and tried. My sister and I made several ascensions there. One time, my sister came down amongst the Maoris. They thought her the angel from heaven, which they say will come to help them drive the British from their land, and they hurried her away into the interior. We had to get the mounted police and call out the volunteers before we could get her back. On the way to this country, we stopped at the Solomon Islands where the cannibals are. There we had to wear thick veils because the natives are very anxious to possess a Pakaha Wahini, or beautiful white woman, and will go to any lengths to secure one. I made one ascent there, coming down on the roof of a house which gave way and let me through. End of quote. Major Clemens, who is arranging for the Niagara event, states that Miss Viola will be suspended by gutter percha bands in the centre of a huge cask. This will be weighted at one end so that she may make the journey in an upright position. Robert Earlston, the aeronaut, is with Miss Viola and will have charge of the balloon from which she will be dropped. Did Millie make that trip over Niagara Falls? No. Since 1850, more than 5,000 people have gone over, either intentionally or accidentally. Only 16 survived going over the Canadian Falls, none over the American Falls. In 1897, Millie married a theatrical agent, Phil Hastings, and relinquished her aeronautical career. She died in San Francisco in 1935. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notify bell, and that would encourage more content.